This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Going to check the camp, Stumpy did what many of us had gotten into the habit of doing. He took his sidearm. He also took Nancy's cell phone and his Labrador retriever, Dolly. Nancy remembered that Stumpy had a smile on his face as he got into his pickup to leave. It would be a beautiful Saturday morning in the Adirondack Park. Like everyone else, naturally, Stumpy was very aware of the two murderers' escape, even more so as a prison guard himself. All of us who have worked with inmates were especially alert, knowing what they can be like. By this time, two weeks had elapsed, and the news was full of possible sightings pretty much everywhere. At this point, law officers reported, they had pursued something like fifteen hundred leads. A few hundred of the officers assigned to the search here had been redeployed, but there was still no hard evidence of where the escapees might be. A force of six hundred local, state, and federal officers was still here, still looking. Stumpy's short trip into the Adirondack backcountry was uneventful, though slow and bumpy. He had asphalt under his tires until he passed through the little hamlet of Standish. Then, crossing from Clinton into Franklin County, he turned onto unpaved Wolf Pond Road. That uneven, rocky, single-lane track twists and climbs up and down through rugged country. Even a four-wheel drive truck like Stumpy's often has to slow to a crawl, and both he and Dolly were bounced around inside the cab. Finally, after almost ten miles of this, Stumpy turned his pickup onto the path to Twisted Horn. Then the going got really rough. That 1.7-mile route to his camp is more rock than dirt. A full-sized vehicle, even with four-wheel drive, can't make it all the way. Stumpy stopped the truck at a small clearing in the woods, not far from Wolf Pond Road, to unload his all-terrain vehicle. He would ride the ATV rather than walk up the rocky track to his camp. The last mile and a half is filled with hairpin turns, ups and downs, and an endless supply of loose rocks. Just getting to Twisted Horn offers plenty of opportunities for a twisted ankle or broken leg. The Adirondacks are full of spectacular hiking trails. This isn't one of them. Stumpy and Dolly had made this trip plenty of times. He easily maneuvered the 600-pound four-wheeler while Dolly trotted alongside, pausing here and there, as dogs do, to enjoy all the sniffs in the woods. Just before Stumpy got to Twisted Horn, Dolly bolted ahead of him. When he caught up, he saw she was on alert. The barking Labrador's attention was focused on the camp. The fur on her back was standing up. Clearly, something was wrong. Before Stumpy could even get off his ATV, he spotted movement in his camp. No wild critter. What he saw through the window of his bunkhouse's front door was human. Something moved again. This time he could make out a hooded figure scurrying back and forth inside the camp's only building. Stumpy knew his approach had been well announced by his ATV's powerful engine. He never had the element of surprise. He drew on his training and calculated his best course of action— he knew his only option was to stay out in the open, with no cover, so he could see as much of the camp as possible. Stumpy drew his handgun and shouted a challenge to whoever was in the bunkhouse. He barked an order. Come out and show yourself. He heard no response, but saw more movement inside the camp. Again Stumpy ordered whoever was inside to show himself. By this time, the veteran corrections officer's training and gut instinct for self-preservation had kicked in. He felt the danger. Stumpy couldn't be sure if he had seen one or two people in the camp. Suddenly, without warning, he heard the back door slam and the sound of footsteps on the camp's back deck. Then came the crashing sound of movement through the woods. Stumpy knew he couldn't get cell phone service— not at the camp, 
not anywhere nearby. He knew he would have to get back to his truck and then drive to some place where he could get a signal and call police.